can you stretch out a grow for as long as possible? How many flushes can you actually get? And can you add more substrate to keep flushing? These are the questions that I want to be answering today. What's up, everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. I feel like I'm totally finally out of my jet lag, so I'm ready to really, really get back into the swing of things. So, okay, let's get right into it, right? So the, the questions about how many flushes can you get and uh, secondarily, can you add more substrate to keep flushing? How about like nutrients, right? Maybe adding some, I remember a couple months ago, or maybe it was like last year, uh, the, on Reddit, people were saying like, oh, you add some, you could add some brown rice and you could also add uh, some honey, right? And then, you know, it's gonna keep going, right? It's like nutrition. So I wanna talk about that kind of thing. So yeah, let's get right into it. So first question, how many flushes can you actually get? So you could actually get pretty much infinite flushes. Well, not infinite, obviously, but like virtually infinite. I've kept tubs going for months and months and months, right? With core, with non-nutritious substrates. And I'm gonna have to touch upon nutritious and non-nutritious substrates in this video because I think a lot of beginners, actually I know a lot of beginners don't really understand that core is non-nutritious or CVG, you know, vermiculite plus gypsum or any combination of those, they're non-nutritious. So that means that they're not really bringing anything to the table other than structure and water, right? Which are important, very important because mushrooms are more than 90 plus percent water. So they need water to produce, but they're not adding energy, right? They're just providing like the necessary water to grow basically in the structure. Um, so nutrition comes from, for 99% of us that are out there growing core lovers, right? Like GT, B+, PE, etc., etc., TAT, whatever, are growing on a core-based substrate, on a non-nutritious substrate. So to answer the, the, that question about can you add more substrate to keep flushing, what people are asking me most of the time is they're talking about core. So they're saying, okay, so let's say that you got one flush out of this, right? Or let's say you got three flushes out of this and now it's slowing down, right? It's really slow. There's, it's not producing nearly as much mushrooms. Completely normal, right? And then so the, their idea is to add more core into it so that it can flush more. And the simple answer to that is no in various levels uh, uh, for various reasons, I should say. Uh, because again, you're not adding any energy into it. So you're actually gonna let the tiny amount of remaining energy that rests within this substrate to first colonizing all that extra core that you put in. And that core is not gonna be helping or adding anything because it's non-nutritious. It's just gonna be draining the ener the few remaining, you know, the little remaining power that you, your mushrooms have to colonizing the thing and then afterwards it's going to have to consolidate and then and then fruit again so that's just like a lot of wasted energy now if you use for example manure which you which if you're a beginner you're going to have to pasteurize right that's a whole other step that takes a long time and it's also risky it could contaminate it contaminates a lot easier than core because it is nutritious but even that's risky especially because your substrate your mycelium is already tired from flushing Right, So it's already in a weakened state. It's not as strong as it was when you took it out of the jar and spawned it to bulk it the first time, right? So, you know, that's also another thing that you got to think about. Um, so it's definitely not worth it. And also nutritious, the word nutritious substrate is misleading because compared to the grains that you're using to spawn, its nutrition is like nothing compared to the amount of power that there are in the grains. The grains are just crazy. They're just they're just like batteries, literally, right? But nutritious, it's just like only a little bit. And case in point, you look at wild core lovers growing on poo, right, in the wild, and you see that you know the the pin set is very sparse compared to a tub or you know any of our indoor grows that we do, where you get, you know, you can get like full on like forest canopies, right? Just packed tubs. You never see that in the wild, at least for poo loving species. And that's because there's just not much nutrition in there, right? So there's a lot of lessons, for example, that we can learn from the wild that we can apply to our growing. But also we have to keep in mind that our growing is our priorities are different from what these mushrooms prioritize in the wild, which is just pure reproduction. 
we prioritize different things like taste, flavonoid content, umami, you know, that kind of thing. So that that's just a sort of side point that I, I often make in my live streams and videos. So I just want to get that out of the way as well. So my be best advice essentially is to just get out of the mindset of trying to extend a grow for as long as possible. Because I people think that a lot of people think that this is um, kind of the ideal situation. Okay, you made a shoebox or, or a monotub or whatever you have. And the mark of success is to have that monotub just keep producing mushrooms for months and months and months. Well, I'll tell you why it's not a mark of success. Okay, it can be a mark of success if what you're going for is just, just that pure, you know, just having it around for a long time. I've been there, right? I've been there, you know, just fun to see how long can it actually stretch. I had about four months, a little over four months, and that was that. But by the end of it, it was still producing mushrooms technically, right? But it was just like tiny little mushrooms because it just really expanded everything that it had. And it's cool to do it like once, you know, just to see like how effective mushrooms are at really using whatever little ounce of energy that they have left, half an ounce of energy, quarter ounce of energy left to produce mushrooms. It's, it is very interesting, that is for true, that is for sure. But here's the thing though, a lot of people that are asking this question are not doing it for just like pure, just experimentation or whatever. They want to produce as much as they can, and they think that by doing this, they're going to get the most bang for their buck. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're not getting the most bang for your buck. If you want to get like the most yield, right, as quickly as possible, this is not the way to do it because mushrooms will expend most of their energy within the first two flushes. Like I'm talking 90 plus percent of their energy will be gone in the first two flushes. Now, there are specific special exceptions where certain genetics right and this is it always comes down to genetics at the bottom line assuming you got perfect conditions and everything okay in this hobby it's just the way it is um some genetics for example will produce tons of pin set like a, an amazing pin set and you think to yourself wow this is going to be an incredible flush i'm going to have so many mushrooms and what ends up happening is a lot of them abort or a lot of them just stay like the same pin size and then like only a few of them will start to mature like here and there and it's going to take for ever for it to actually expend like the energy of even just a single flush of regular first flush it's going to take like five flushes for that specific genetics for those specific genetics to actually you know produce that yield equivalent yield and that was sort of a side note but ultimately people that ask me that question about oh you know i want to to last as long as possible how do i make it last as long as possible so i can make as much mushrooms if you want to make as much mushrooms this is what you got to do. You just got to make sure that you get your genetics on point, right? And also B, you want to make sure that you got your proper conditions. You got the right amount of substrate. You got, you know what proper surface conditions look like. I got videos on all of these topics on my channel. So check it out. Give it a like, comment, and subscribe if you do enjoy it and want some more and want to support me as well. Um, so you, assuming you got all these things proper, then that's it, right? People who grow for yield and who do this for a long time, will always tell you it's only either one flush is done or two flushes is done that's it yeah it could produce like a measly third flush or fourth flush but at that point it's just a lot faster to just get a new tub going and if you do this for a while right then you're going to have multiple projects going at different timelines so you could you could easily make it so that you always have like fresh spawn ready to be spawned to bulk you always have like a already spawned to bulk tub that's fully colonized and about to start fruiting all these different timelines right so just get out of that mindset of trying to extend it and <laughs> talking back oh yeah, about the reddit uh about how people were saying oh yeah you should add brown rice and some honey and it's going to make it last even longer it's bs okay because a brown rice and honey especially brown rice is very nutritious right and that's just a recipe for disaster because there there is just not even pasteurized i wouldn't even pasteurize brown rice and add it to substrate personally because it's just too nutritious it's just too risky if i'm going to be using brown rice it's going to be as spawn right? That's it. It's not, it's not really an additive. It's too nutritious for that. Um, same goes for coffee. Don't use coffee as a, a, as a substrate additive. In fact, I don't recommend coffee uh, ever to be used unless you really, really know what you're doing about the nitrogen levels in your substrate. For example, if you're going to use coffee, don't use manure, right? Manure's got 
a good amount of nitrogen and it's also got like a good bio balance of uh, organisms to uh, balance things out better coffee is a little bit more like a shot and it's just too much right it's it's too unbalanced but anyways i digress uh so yeah don't be adding brown rice don't be adding honey into your substrates just let it run its course if even, without any additives with just core most of the energy is going to be expended within the first two flushes in fact with any substrate mix that you use nutritious or non-nutritious most of it it's going to be done by the first two flushes for the vast majority of cases so i guess that's basically the the thing that i wanted to say in this video so you know to sum it all up good genetics good conditions equals fast effective and high yield producing tops and grows bag grows whatever it may be okay guys so that's basically the video for today i hope you guys enjoyed it you can support me on my patreon use my affiliate links in the description get some get yourself some nice meaty discounts and some nice genetics and fan filter units and all that you'll see it all in the description also got a discord server for free it's for free and it is one of the premier destinations for myco knowledge in the community so check it out if you guys want i've also got a patreon that's where i post all of my fruiting videos because if you guys didn't know my old channel got taken down because i was showing fruits just as many channels are still being taken down today for showing fruits and so on patreon all the videos are free after a month after release now i've been doing it since december december guys so there is a backlog dozens and dozens of free videos you don't even need an account to check it out you can go watch those videos and learn get yourself some knowledge and see some cool fruits and but if you do want to support me from the five dollar tier upwards you will get the videos as soon as i release them you will watch them one month you'll have a one month exclusive period where you get to watch those videos only and all the other members of the paid tiers will be able to other than the 250 tier and then after a month it'll be public and everybody can access it because i don't really believe in paywalls for knowledge all right guys thanks for watching microfile sage check it out for now